Hi, this is George Prohaska from the Industrial Products and Service category. This is George's category chat, and today we're talking with business development specialist for GSA, Stephen Bartley. I'm really excited to bring Steve to you guys today because he, in our organization, is the voice of the customer. Now, Steve works across several categories, and he may be talking about things that go across multiple categories, but one thing that's constant is the customer. So let's get started. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I came out of the IT world uh, in 2003. I uh, was a technical recruiter and was brought in to learn how to write contracts and use the schedules and eventually moved into a full-time business development role. Okay, so in business development, that's a little bit about matching customers' needs with contract solutions. Is that kind of right? So you've got a, uh, you sort of got to, put the mindset of the category manager on in terms of a deeper product knowledge than most people. Yeah, with well, the foundation in contracting coming out of industry, yes. So I understand how business works. That's great. Steve, one of the things I know about you is you are a storyteller. Could you tell us a little customer uh, story that might uh, give us some insight into category management? Sure. I think the best example I can give you I'll just uh, top of my head would be out of the uh, Category, the uh, scientific category. Okay. Uh, I've been working with a health and human service customer for the last several years and trying to uh, help them uh, manage their spend a little bit better. Okay. Because they've been they've been, they've been tracking the history of the last several years, three or four, and they use primarily government purchase cards for micro buys. And it's just lab supplies, okay. just, you know, like gloves, for example. Sure. Uh, and it, the thing is, they're using the Schedule 66 contract program. So though what they see on GSA Advantage is all maximum pricing. And so they're not you know, picking up the phone and talking to these suppliers. They're not you know, emailing or chatting. They're just using the credit card. And okay. it's just a maximum purchase every time. So they have shifted since uh, in the last couple of years, they've created a uh, program called IDEA. Okay. Where it's an incentive program within HHS, which touches all of their umbrella agencies, uh, it's just as an incentive for them to submit ideas to the upper management. And it, oh yeah, I think I saw one of those videos. Those are cool. Yeah. Where the one of the managers comes on and says, "Hey, this is the topic of the week. Send us some ideas." Yeah, it's yeah. all about cool. uh, cost savings, cost avoidance, and really their big push is economies of scale. That's pretty. And so what they're looking for right now, and as we've been continuing our, our uh, meetings, phone conference calls, whatever, uh, they keep pushing the whole thing: strategic planning, strategic sourcing. What's the best way to manage the economies of scale? And so th what they're after in this program, they want to establish government-wide contracts, you know, much like GSA's NSNs are, uh, just in scope. They're government-wide. They want to do the same thing. Like you think all of the, like we did with Jansan and that, that mm -hmm. category sure. with uh, the FSSI uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. They want to do the same thing with an idea that would touch all government agencies. Great. So they want to try to leverage some government-wide contracts, and that, that would help them get spent under management and possibly get a lot better discounts. Huh? If not create their own, then use somebody uh, some other agencies. Great. Now, Steve, I want to come back to something we started with. You're sort of got that category manager mindset in terms of a product expert. Tell us a little bit more about that and why that's helpful to agencies to have people like that in the contracting realm. Well, being at GSA, our mission critical is writing contracts. Mm -hmm. And so having been on both sides of it now, as a contracting officer and now business development, there is a, there's still a divide that, that we're still trying to bridge that gap. And the challenge you have is contracting officers are process driven. You know, it's a regulated process of writing sure. a contract where what I do in business development, I support for uh, vendor programs. It's really, if you look at it, the, the government's approved vendor list is all schedules really is. Mm -hmm. If you look at industry, that's the terminology they understand. And when you say schedules, we're talking government-wide contracts. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, it's, so that's the, uh, the, the, the advantage I've got is, is coming out of industry and having written our contracts internally, now I know how to speak both languages, but in translated terms. Because industry doesn't care what a contracting officer has to understand in the regulated process. Mm -hmm. They just know they don't want to get in trouble. Because mm -hmm. their whole thing is just pushing the commercial sales and marketing. So that's what I'm, I'm working hand-in-hand. Hand. Since there's a, 
a gap that we got a bridge, I am that bridge right now. You're an interpreter between the two. almost. All, all the time. Yeah, you're always yep. interpreting. And, and in the process, you're helping the customers get a better solution, and you're helping the vendors understand the government process, yep. and you're driving towards use of government-wide vehicles to help them with spend under management. Oh, Is that right? You know, that's right. Yeah, Some another example I can give you. Of, sure. I was in uh, NCR DC a couple weeks ago. I rode out with one of the police officers is, uh, with the park department, okay. uh, Silver Spring. Sure. And it's another customer working with, working with for the last few years under the uh, government-wide, the uh, security protection yeah, category. Uh -huh. So they, I, I arranged a, uh, a ride out with one of their cops. That's pretty cool. To get direct feedback. Now that's category management. You start, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. You start really so understanding the customer's job. Awesome. And I got direct feedback on their restraint equipment, their emergency kits, their body-worn camera, the dash cam. I was 12 to midnight. It was midnight to 4 a.m. shift. Wow. So I'm not riding around with this guy. They have 540 square miles to cover and over 400 parks. I so bet you saw some stuff. Yeah. Night. Yeah. Uh, good stories. But wow. I was able to get direct feedback, and that's exactly what a category management manager does, which a con this is where the divide is. Contracting doesn't really have a whole lot of time because they're so driven on just maintaining the rules. Staying okay. within those legal parameters, category manager has. This, this is where we're still need some deeper the, product knowledge. Yeah, yeah, and and understand what the customer needs to get that solution. Steve, it's been great having you today. I want to get you back here another day good. with a customer next to you on your side. We'll make that happen. So this has been uh, chats and category with George. Uh, it's been a great uh, opportunity today to have a real category manager where the rubber meets the road. Thanks, Steve Bartling. Thank you.